Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we have a bit of a bonus video. My immediate re uh, reaction to the Champions League draw where Manchester United have of course been drawn against Galatasaray, Copenhagen and also Bayern Munich. I'm going to give you kind of a rundown on each of those teams real quick, my opinions, my thoughts on what this group stage is going to hold for Manchester United. Now the draw literally finished uh, 10 minutes ago, so this is literally my immediate reaction. We will start off with Galatasaray who... They've got some real talents, to be fair. I mean, if you look at that team, there's a lot of very decent players. Ignore this down here. That's for the other teams. Um, but if you look at this Galatasaray team, of course, it depends on what starting eleven they go for. But there's some real talent in this team. On the wings, Ziyech and Zaha, they're going to cause big problems. They'll be a transitional threat, particularly with Zaha. It might well be a game where you call for Aaron Mambasaka. Icardi, an experienced striker. Ziyech, Dries Mertens, all very experienced players. Now, in terms of... Their style of play, it's a little bit difficult to predict because I've brought so many new players in. Last year, they were very good from a defensive point of view, very solid at the back, didn't concede too many goals. In terms of how they like to attack, I'd imagine Angelino from left back is going to bomb all the way forward because, you know, he's done it throughout his career. Demabai will offer a bit of attacking support as well. Zaha will be looking to come into these pockets, but of course... Also, he will be looking to go one versus one. So, so I do think that is a game where Aaron Wabasaka will be needed. The big thing here is can you deal with the, the individual talents on the counter-attack? Now, like I said, Galatasaray are probably the hardest team to predict in the Champions League this season because they've got so many new players jumbled into one. We just don't know how quickly they're going to gel, how quickly they're going to perform. In terms of the best way for United to kind of approach the games against Galatasaray, it'll be about being, compo uh, being composed sorry, and keeping possession. I can't even find the football. Here it is. It'll be about keeping the ball, particularly away from home. The, the atmosphere against Galatasaray away from home will be intense, to say the least. That will be a, a really intense atmosphere. It's not an easy place to go at all. United, it will all be about composure on the ball, building possession, making sure you keep the ball. Don't feed the, the, the fans, really, of the opposition with big chances. Keep the ball, kind of take tempo out of the matches. And the big thing for me is going to be... Can you deal with the transitioning threat of Galatasaray? In terms of when United are in sustained possession, I think they will have some success. I mean, Ziyech, Zaha, Mertens aren't the most defensive-minded players. Neither is Demabai either. Torreira is good in this position. He'll cover a lot of ground, but again, he's not the best defensive player in the world. And Helino can be suf uh, suspect in a back four in defensive situations. The rest of the back four don't look too great. So this will be about, when it comes to the Galatasaray games, really managing the occasion. If United do that and play to their best, I would expect them to win these games. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. Next up, Copenhagen. And again, a team which is really quite difficult to predict. We don't really know what to expect. I doubt many of you out there watch too much of Copenhagen. In terms of kind of my thoughts on them early on, they are a team which want to play nice football. They like to play attractive football. They've got a good manager in that sense. Someone who's trying to play, quote, in the right way. They want to have the ball. It'll be short tick attacker at times. They'll look to build a ball through the pitch. It will be in this sort of 4-3-3 formation, but it will often become a 2-3 with the fullbacks either side of the holding midfielder, and these two midfielders will push a little bit further forward. Like I said, there, there will be quality on display in terms of the football they look to play. It will be positive. They'll be trying to get the ball forward. The problem will be, do they actually have the, the real quality which is needed? I mean, El Yunusi on the right wing, for example, doesn't scream terrifying attacking threat or even attacking outlet, really. So United, again, they should have too much quality in these games, United, for Copenhagen. United should be able to dominate the ball, create chances. Again, if we're talking about someone like Rashford up against a Copenhagen right back, it looks like a bit of a mismatch. It's a game where Anthony should have some success. And again, it's one of those games where United should be able to get their front five attacking shape going up against that back four of Copenhagen. It probably looks a bit of a mismatch. Again, I would imagine it's one of those games where United will need to keep their composure, be patient uh, be patient on the ball, cycle it about, make sure they're not overturning possession for the sake of it. But also, having that bit of quality in the final third to create something. I think both games will be those sorts of situations where if you can get a goal in the first 20 minutes and maybe be 2-0 up by half-time, you could end up going on to have quite a comfortable match in the end. Whether or not that happens will remain to be seen. We'll have to see as we get closer to the time. In terms of Copenhagen, their biggest threat will probably be attacking set pieces. They were really very effective from them last season. 
that is something United will need to watch out for because United are not good at dealing with set pieces from a defensive point of view. We, we all know that. I think everyone in Europe knows that. And Copenhagen will certainly know that. They will be aware of that. And they will look to target United with deliveries into the box. So that is something United will have to be switched on for. It could be a game where you see some bigger players brought into the side. The likes of Dallow, Amrabat if he's at the club by then, Scott McTominay, Rasmus Hoyland. I would expect some of the more physical presences to play this game. But again, I think overall, if you're kind of looking at it from the outside, looking in, Manchester United against Copenhagen, two fixtures, you would expect six points realistically for Manchester United. So... Again, I don't think it's a bad draw at all. Now, as you would expect, the real test will come from the first seed team, the team in pot one, which is, of course, Bayern Munich, uh, the German champions, the team which never always there or thereabouts in the Champions League, if we're being honest. They're always a very good side. Although I have to be honest, perhaps not quite as good as we've seen in the past, not quite as smooth as we've seen in the past, not quite as machine-like and not quite as efficient. This isn't the best Bayern team you're ever going to see. Tuchel seems a little bit unsettled in terms of his formation, in terms of his personnel. In terms of kind of currently the tactical side of things, they'll look to build possession in a 2-4 shape, with Kimmich and Goretzka being a double pivot. Masraoui and Alfonso Davies will look to push into these positions. This is where Bayern will look to play football from. Now, from here, Komen and Sane will most likely move into sort of half-space positions, and Muziala will also be a big threat. And the idea being, typically for Tuchel at Bayern so far, is kind of, can we get these players all really close to each other? Really close proximity, allowing you to play quick football. So expect a, a game where you're seeing perhaps Muziala carrying the ball through the pitch, but then releasing it to someone like Leroy Sane. That will probably be the big threat. It'll be the big way they look to progress the ball. It'll be quick, sharp passing through the middle of the pitch. They're very, very technical. I mean, Sane, Muziala, Komen, Kimmich kind of speak for themselves in terms of technical quality. Now, in terms of overall and my general view on Bayern at the moment as a football club, I don't particularly like the balance of their midfield. I think Kimmich is being used as a six, and whilst he may have that number on his shirt, I, I still don't think it's his best position. I think he is best uh, pushed a little bit further forward, and Goretzka doesn't really allow that to happen. So perhaps that's a slight weakness in the team, although you know Kimmich as a six is still incredible. You would, though, just maybe think United on the counter-attack, there's a lot of speed here. Marcus Rashford against Masraoui is a bit of a mismatch. Bruno Fernandes taking on Kimmich. Kimmich isn't great in these areas. Potential mismatch. We know that Upa Meccano can be sloppy in big moments, in big games. So maybe you could target something like that. In terms of going the other way, Harry Kane. Having Harry Kane alone makes you one of the favourites for the Champions League, especially when you've got this squad behind him. United know what to expect from Harry Kane. We've seen it already in his opening weeks at Bayern. Incredible finishing, but not only that, incredible link play. His ability to drop deeper into these areas, get runners around him. Harry Kane is so good, and with players like Sane and Komen being nice and direct, very technical, fast dribblers, and looking to get shots off at goal, this game will be tough. Both games against Bayern will be very difficult indeed. Now, like I've said, I don't think Bayern are, are as good as we've seen in the past. We have seen better editions of this Bayern team, but having Harry Kane up front could be the difference. We saw what Robert Lewandowski done for the side a few years ago. Harry Kane alone, like I said, he, he puts you right up there as one of the favourites. In terms of how I would expect the two, came, uh, the two games to go, I actually think they'll be quite even. I don't think there will be a clear favourite going into those games. Bayern probably edge it just about. But I, again, I wouldn't be too doom and gloom about it if I was, you know, as I am, a United fan sitting here looking at it. It's not the end of the world. I think United have some real quality in transition, which could hurt Bayern. Bayern, again, they're not that well-oiled machine that they have always been. And I think overall, Ten Hag will be somewhat pleased with this group. It's the Champions League at the end of the day. It's not going to be easy. You're facing champions from around the world, teams which have gone through qualifiers, tough teams. Only the, you know, the teams which win football matches make it as far as the Champions League group stages. So all of the teams will provide threat. In terms of Galatasaray, it's going to be about that. That probably the, the individual quality of the players on the counter-attack, that will be a big, big problem. In terms of the Copenhagen game, it will be more about attacking set pieces, I would imagine. They are very good from those situations, so United will need to be switched on and have a good structure. And then in terms of Bayern, like I said, I think it's probably 50-50. This is two top teams full of European heritage going head-to-head. -head. The battle should be... The battle should be really fun to watch. Who would I back as top or as favourite to top this group? I think I would probably just about go for Bayern. I think their, their team's still a little bit more balanced. They may not be perfectly set in terms of their patterns and their routines just yet under Thomas Tuchel. 
but Thomas Tuchel knows how to set up a team defensively for Champions League football. We saw it with Chelsea, but there's so much attacking quality. So I would probably go for Bayern to top the group. I would then expect the Red Devils, Eric Ten Hag's men, to be in second place, and therefore they should qualify for the next round. Probably going to go for Galatasaray in third, and then Copenhagen to bottom the group. But those are kind of my first impressions. Like I said, the draw finished 25 minutes ago now, so this is literally my first reaction. I've had notes on every single team in the draw written down, so I was ready for this video. If you want to see more predictions for the Champions League, make sure to tune in to tomorrow's live stream tomorrow afternoon. We'll be discussing transfer deadline day, Champions League predictions, uh, looking ahead to the weekend of football. We'll be talking about it all, so make sure to tune into the live stream. But in terms of the Champions League group stage draw, Manchester United's group, I think I am finished for today. So let me know your thoughts. Who immediately stands out to you as being a big threat in this group in terms of player or a team? Let me know what you think. Where do you think United will finish? Again, let me know what you think. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.